Well, let's get more Brexit reaction now to that deal. The former UKIP leader and current MEP Nigel Farage joins us now live from Westminster. Good news, we can finally move on to trade talks. This is a victory, isn't it, for Theresa May? Uh, it's a victory. If you, if you think paying away a gargantuan sum of money is a good thing, if you think giving foreign courts jurisdiction um, over this country for nearly up to a decade to come, uh, and in terms of alignment, well, really what we're saying today is that the potential benefits of Brexit uh, won't be realised because we will not be able to put in place laws that suit our own industry. So we have put a lot on the table for absolutely nothing guaranteed in return. OK, well, let's talk about some of those. Uh, you talk about the uh, final divorce bill. We're hearing today this new figure, 35 to 39 billion pounds. That's an awful lot less, isn't it, than the 50 billion that we were expecting? Or the 100 billion, which is where they started. I mean, that's how the EU have done this, isn't it? Put out a ridiculous figure, frighten the British, get Theresa May to promise 20 in Florence, and up we go. Look, we do not need to be paying anything like this sum of money. The only reason they want this exorbitant sum is because they have refused to cut any of their future spending programmes despite the fact the United Kingdom is leaving. So we should not be paying that large sum of money. Okay. Well, the Foreign Secretary, as we all know, said that the EU could go whistle for any excessive demands in terms of a financial settlement. Well, today he said he's very happy. He's congratulated Theresa May. Yeah, well done, Boris. Party first. Always put party loyalty first. You know, a cabinet of 25 people, 18 of whom are Remainers, uh, but it's all about the party, not about the country, and not about what we voted for. Come on, 17.4 million people did not vote for a large exit fee, did not vote for the European Court of Justice to go on having a say over this country, and most certainly did not vote, and this is the next thing coming up, for a transition deal that will probably last until the next general election. And so the worry with everything that's happened today is that whilst we will leave the European Union, it may well be we do it in name only. Uh, in terms of this phrase, uh, full alignment, uh, mm. to many Brexiteers, this will be a, a, a massive concession, won't it? Because if a deal isn't done, we essentially fall back into the single market and the customs union. Yes, and that is exactly what we voted uh, against. I mean, you know, 80% of the UK economy involves no overseas trade whatsoever, and yet we're bound by the rules of the European single market. And for uh, you know, any prospect of us to be stuck in that long term, which is what the, you know, the Prime Minister has agreed to this morning, is a complete betrayal of that vote. Uh, you mentioned earlier about the future role of the European Court. We're hearing uh, from the document again that the ECJ will still have a vote uh, overseeing yeah. rights of EU citizens for up, a, a role, sorry, overseeing the rights of EU citizens for up to eight years. Clearly, that's something you're not happy about. No, and what it does, of course, it creates two classes of citizen living within the United Kingdom. So, you know, a well-heeled, multi-millionaire French banker living in London will have more rights than a UK citizen or anyone else living here from the rest of the world. I mean, clearly that is a totally unacceptable situation. Uh, Michael Gove today has said it'll be a matter for British judges to decide what cases are referred to the court. So uh, it's not quite as black and white as, as some may suggest. Well, we have a very Europhile judiciary, so uh, I think many, many will go there. And also, I'd remind Michael Gove uh, that if you look at the document um, and, and look at the article number 38, you know, it makes absolutely clear that the ECJ continues to have uh, you know, supremacy. It is, I quote, the ultimate arbiter. That, Michael, is what the document says. Uh, Mr. Fries, we can move now to uh, trade talks, can't we? Which will be uh, a big relief for many, including uh, businesses here in the UK. Um, do you accept that the EU's point of view now, their starting point, will be essentially to give us less than we have already? We should never have accepted that we have to put a lot of things on the table before we even move to trade talks. That was the mistake the government made at the very beginning of this process. Uh, I, I think the point about trade talks on their own is if we're going to have a tariff-free regime for goods, where we are a massive, massive net importer from the European Union, they in turn will have to recognise the equivalence of our financial services community. 
But we have to have compromise, don't we? I mean, uh, we've <coughs> heard this word a lot in the last few hours. It is all about compromise. If we want well, to have any sort of successful future, if we want any sort of deal to work for us, there has to be compromise from everyone. Yeah, well, so far, compromise is they ask and we give. Um, and let me just say what's not being talked about today, and that's this, that, you know, even on the most optimistic assessment, we would not be able to sign a new trade deal with any part of the world until the end of 2021, which would be six years after we voted Brexit. And that is the problem. We have a government managing this process who clearly don't believe in what they're doing. OK, we must leave it there. Nigel Farage, Thank many you. thanks.